Hey, what's up everyone? It's your good friend Eric Thompson. In this video, I'm going to give you three reasons why it's better to use an agent to sell your home as opposed to going for sale by owner. If this is your first time here to the channel, a big warm welcome to you. Welcome here to the channel. Make sure you subscribe. See that red subscribe button? Press that button. That way you're sure to get more helpful videos just like this one as soon as they get released. So I'm gonna help you out with clarifying, again, three reasons why it's way better to use an agent to sell your home versus going for sale by owner. First of all, did you know only 10% of all home sellers actually choose to sell the, the home themselves, choose to go for sale by owner. Half of the 10% already know the buyer, okay? So uh, half of that 10%, they already know the buyer. So only 5% of people are actually going through the whole process of putting the home on the market themselves, putting the sign in the front yard themselves, fielding all the inquiries themselves, dealing with the, all the negotiations and all the steps and all the paperwork et cetera, only 5% of all home sellers actually choose to go through that whole process on their own because half of these, again, they already know the buyer, so it's like a prearranged transaction. Okay, so let me take you through three reasons why. First of all, did you know that on average, a home uh, that's sold with an agent sells at 345,000 versus a home that on average that's uh, sold for sale by owner, that average is 225,000. Now you guys, that is a 55% difference, okay? So reason number one is uh, based on the research, based on the data, you will achieve a higher price. By the way, this research, this data comes from NAR, uh, the National Association of Realtors, and the survey that they do every year, thousands of recent home buyers and sellers, that's where this data comes from. So based on the research, and a home that sells with an agent will sell for a much higher average price than a home that's sold by a seller who's choosing to go for sale by owner. Why is that? Well, there are lots of reasons. First of all, an agent, they're really good at marketing and market positioning, all right? So they're good at deciding and determining and analyzing how that, how that property, how that home should be positioned in the marketplace, how it should be priced, how it should be marketed. They're also very good at marketing, uh, making sure that the property looks world-class, not just in person, but also online. It's online where the uh, buyer normally has that first impression of the home. So an agent is really good at photography, at virtual tours, at videos, to making sure uh, that that property is making a terrific first impression. Plus agents, they have a wide net to cast, able to reach out in many cases all over the world to market that property. And plus they have a great network of local real estate agents, their peers right there in their marketplace who are very likely to be working with a prospective buyer. That agent has a great reputation among those, among those other agents in their network and they work to market that property to their network of agents. So all kinds of reasons why agent assisted transaction is much more likely to achieve a higher price. Reason number two, my friends, is because of negotiation. Now, for a seller trying to do this on, on their own, not only is negotiation time consuming, not only is it uh, brain cell consuming, you know, there's lots of brain damage that goes along with negotiation. The other aspect of this is that oftentimes sellers don't realize that there are three rounds of negotiation, okay? So not only is there the first round where you have the initial uh, price and terms that are negotiated, but there's a big negotiation that happens two more times dur during the transaction, okay? So the second time would be the inspection. There's absolute negotiation that, that occurs during the inspection, and then the third time is during appraisal. Okay, so if the buyer is getting a loan, sometimes the appraisal comes back short of the purchase price, all right? So the appraisal is low. That's another round of negotiation. Okay, so what are we gonna do if the appraisal comes in low? What are we gonna do when the buyer wants us to fix certain things? Now, here's the thing. Realtors, agents, they're very attuned. They're very accustomed to doing this. They get lots of practice doing this. They are experts at dealing with these phases of negotiation, not just the paperwork and all the legal terms involved, but the strategy. How do we communicate to the buyer? How do we answer their objections? How do we keep them in the transaction and make sure that they don't bail out of the transaction during all of these key moments of negotiation? Not only do those agents, those realtors have a lot of experience doing it themselves, but also they have a whole network of peers 
who have likely faced the exact same situation. So they, they can reach out to other agents in their company. They can reach out to their manager, their, their broker to get assistance with this. They can reach out again to their peers, the other people that they know. They can have people to help them through all these steps. So these are massive steps that, that occur during the uh, transaction. Again, the first one is obvious. These next two are often overlooked. And sellers who try to sell the property themselves, they often underestimate the difficulty and the intricacies involved here and how involved each step is in order to keep that buyer in the transaction and make sure that they don't cancel the transaction. Okay, that's reason number two. Reason number three is because of liability. Okay, so there is a lot of liability that goes along with selling a home because there's a lot of money that goes along with buying or selling a home. For most people, just about everyone, it is the single largest purchase that they're ever, ever going to make. And so there are some key steps, some key components of liability, okay? So the first one is fulfillment. And what I mean by that is per the terms of the transaction, per the terms of the purchase agreement, the seller is obligated to fulfill the buyer with certain information to make sure that the buyer has their chance to do their due diligence throughout the process. And so sometimes the seller doesn't fully understand uh, what is to be fulfilled. Sometimes they don't fully appreciate the amount of information that is to be fulfilled. And also sometimes they don't fully understand the sources of, those in, of that information, the best places to go to in order to fulfill the, uh, the buyer and fulfill the terms uh, of the agreement, okay? So that's number one. Number two, a big place of liability and a big place of dispute between a buyer and seller or anything related to disclosure. In just about every place, the seller is required to disclose material defects, material facts about the home that the buyer should know. And what's interesting is that there are some things that uh, live in that category of material defects that the seller may not fully understand, may not fully appreciate. There are some things that you may think you have to disclose, but you actually don't per uh, your local uh, rules and regulations per, per your state. And so sometimes what happens is that the seller discloses too much. They may disclose things that they don't have to, but more often they're not disclosing enough and they don't fully understand all the things that they have to disclose, all the different ways that they have to disclose that in order to make sure that the buyer fully understands everything about that home, the things that they're supposed to know before they close on that property. And the thing is, if those things are not disclosed and not disclosed in the right way, then that can put a big liability back onto the seller. The last aspect to mention here as it relates to liability is insurance. And one reason to work with an agent is because that agent very likely carries errors and emissions insurance, okay? So we all know that mistakes happen, right? Everyone who makes mistakes. The good thing is when an agent makes a mistake, it's likely that that insurance that the agent is carrying can cover that mistake, right? Cover that error that they made, cover that omission that they left out of the purchase agreement just by accident. So we carry insurance for that. Seller doesn't have insurance for those kinds of things. So if an honest mistake is made and the buyer comes back on the seller, and wants to have a disagreement, wants to even have a lawsuit about that, there's no insurance in place to potentially help that out. Okay, so again, those are three reasons why it's much better to use an agent in the transaction as opposed to go for sale by owner. It's price, it's liability, uh, it's marketing, it's time, it's energy, it's all those reasons uh, why it makes way more sense to work uh, with an agent. Okay, so again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up like, please subscribe to my channel so that you get more helpful videos just like this one. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Take care.